Hi, thank you, Blake and Ignacio, for organizing this symposium. This is a great pleasure to be here at CP. And thank you all for, for attending my talk. So I'll talk about courtship displays, this extraordinary phenotype we may find across many animal texts. And we know that sexual selection is the most important force driving the evolution of this behavior through the competition for partners and through mate choice. I will focus on a particular type of display, those in which males or individuals of the same sex cooperate to gain more matings. And uh, this can happen through the enhancing the competitive ability against rivals or attracting more partners for their copulations. And this is an uncommon behavior among animals, but recently in a study they showed that it may happen in fish and birds, as the wild turkey and the green side darter, for example. And perhaps the most fantastic birds showing this behavior are the mannequins here in the Neotropics. These birds of this family, they saw a striking sexual dimorphism, lacking behavior, and in some genus you may find this uh, coordinated dance of multiple males, such as these examples here, the, the leapfrog, movement of the lens-tailed and the long-tailed mannequins, and also the vertical wing display of the red-headed mannequin. So within the, the mannequins family, I've been studying the swallow-tailed mannequin. This bird, which is uh, endemic to the Atlantic forest here in South America, and this is a species which is amazing because males are completely different from the females and they have this bluish body and uh, red crown and black wings and females are greenish they are completely different so the the coordinated display in the swallowtail mannequin was firstly described in the 80s and 90s in these two works i'm presenting here so on the left, we see this publication in an important Brazilian ornithological book the, uh, written by Helmut Sieg, where he, he, makes, he made some important drawings on the male's movements during the dance. And this paper from Mercedes Foster, where she ex explained the complex social structure in this species. And she also made a description on this cooperative dance, which she called the cart with jump display and the pre copulatory soul display. I will show both for you in a second. So here is a video of this multi male coordinated dance, and this is a very interesting display because you will see the variation in the number of males during the dance. So it we will start with two males and by the end we will have five, we will have five males dancing together here to the female she's perched here. And uh, the main movement found here are the cartwheel. So those that uh, that movement that makes like that. And pay attention that by the end, we will see a, a different movement made by the dominant male and the subordinate males. So in the background, we can hear other males singing, vocalizing. So there's a third male now in the hands. Fourth male arrives. And as the dance 
uh, continues, it becomes even faster, and it seems that males get more excited. Now there's the last male arriving. Now he's almost getting to the end. And he's a bit more excited. And this was the end of the dance and here uh, uh, you can see the alpha male on the top and the subordinates on the display part. And usually after this cartwheel um, or sometimes at any other time that females in the display perch, the dominant male makes a solo uh, dance to the female. As you can see here, so there are some butterfly flights. This next butterfly, head up and down, and then butterfly again. This bow before copulation, and males, the, the male tried to copulate with the female, but he wasn't successful in this, this, this time. Sorry. So um, here I will show results of uh, work involved several people and mainly my two students at the time. We collected the data, Laura and Pedro, and some important collaborators like Andre Guaraldo, my husband, and uh, Dr. Lainey Day, also from the Mannequin RCN. I have current studies, students starting some student studies in this species. I have also important collaborators helping us with these projects. And all this was done um, using funding from Brazilian uh, agencies and also Animal Behavior Society. And we also did a crowdfunding campaign which we had 80 collaborators helping us during difficult times for science in Brazil when we had no money at all. And we also counted with equipment donations from friends and also some friends from the RCN. So these are our study areas. Two, we have two study areas in, in South Brazil. And this is a, the largest remnant of Atlantic forest at Mananciais da Serra and Salto Morato. Salto Morato was also the, the place where they recorded part of this series, the Our Planet, the first episode, where you can find a very beautiful recording of the dance of the swallowtailed mannequin. So in both study areas, we've been marking birds and also recording their behaviors using uh, audio devices and video cameras. In, uh, in one of the area we've been working since 2015, and in the other one we started in 2018. So before addressing questions, we uh, first described in detailed in details the motor and acoustic components of these displays and most of these studies are uh, of these results are published in these two papers but i'm go also going to show some unpublished results here so concerning the motor components um, we identified several discrete elements, as you can see here in these boxes, and we, find, we found that they are very stereotyped, meaning that the transitions between these elements are, have higher probability, as you can see for these values here. Uh, and this is also true, this is for the cooperative dance, and uh, this is also true for the solo dance, which is made only by the dominant male. 
Uh, it looks like that the solo dance is much more stereotyped and it could be, uh, it could mean that it's a more rigorous signaling to the female, probably because it usually precedes the copulation. Uh, so going back here in the cooperative dance, we see that, that some movements only the dominant males make and some movements the subordinates and some movements all of them will make. For example, this cart will flight is that movements all of them are, are practicing during the female attendance and the on, only the alpha male makes to goes to this kiki ki, which is that uh, striking sound that males make in the end of the dance and while the subordinates go to the bow display and uh, before reaching to the end of the dance. And there's also this movement, this bill wipe, which we usually see right before the dance starts. So a recent advance we did was uh, with high-speed video cameras in collaboration with Dr. Lainey Dane. She has just presented a talk here in the symposium. And with these videos, I will show here, we could see uh, much detailed information about the flight movements, the wind beats, and some of the sound production by analyzing the, the movements of the beak. And these recordings were made in um, 500 frames per second. These are still unpublished data. And this is also an interesting video where we can see several males dancing, the practicing the cartwheel display. In this video, the female is not attending, but they are doing the cartwheel and you can see the exact moment of pink beads and when males are opening that their beaks for producing sounds. We believe we'll be able to 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 refine our understanding on this 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 display how this display is produced using these videos. So regarding the acoustic repertoire in this species, we described several vocal notes and using the visual inspection of spectrogram and also using discriminant analysis, which confirmed our first classification of, this, of these notes. And uh, the sound produced during the dance is this one labeled here as K, which is very different from all, all others because it's a, a post sound, um, meaning that, that there are post poses produced in extremely fast rates. And we also identified non-vocal sounds which were produced during the butterfly flights, you can see here, and also during, at the end of the dance, while the, the dominant male is making that kiki ki. We believe it's a, a, it's, a, it's a signal produced with the wing beats, and uh, we believe that we'll be able to understand it more after exploring our video, high-speed video recordings. And as in other Carousifia, the swallowtailed mannequin also makes duets, where you have two males producing sounds uh, overlapped or not. But we also identified choruses, which is, to our knowledge, is not present in other species of mannequins. And as you can see here, we have an overlap of four nodes suggesting that there are four different males singing at the, at the same time. I'm also showing you what we do.
displays components described, um, several intriguing questions arise, and we are very interested in understanding these patterns, such as if there's a fem female preference for any male traits, if these traits indicate quality, individual quality, what are the physiological drivers of these behaviors, and how is the social networks within these groups, the social, this, this complex social groups, and is there an impact of that on the breeding success of males? So before answering these questions, we, um, I thought it would be interesting to understand first the variability of these movements, of these components of the display, which is an important scenario for, for sexual selection to act. So to do that, we compared different courts of males in terms of their motor components that could reflect the vigor and skill uh, in the production of this intense display. So for example, we took these four measurements of the, the, our video frames. Uh, for example, we measured how close males get to the female, how high they go right in the beginning of the cartwheel flight and how long do they take to do this movement and the velocity they will make during this cartwheel dance. We did this measurement for four for courts, and we found that there was a clear variability, except for this variable, the flight duration, which was the same, similar to all courts. But we saw, for example, that in flight, flight height, the, the, the ascension flight, uh, some males would go higher, but they would also do that further from the females and they could do that faster in comparison to other words. So uh, these, all these variation and these parameters might be under female evaluation and this could be important for her choice on whether to populate or not with a dominant male. A question we uh, should be able to respond in the future. And in addition to these questions, uh, currently we are investigating the display consistency in terms of entropy. So we are using the frequency of the cartwheel displays to calculate a measurement that would indicate uh, how consistent are the dents. So here are very preliminary results showing the on the left, each, each panel is one display. And you, in here, you, we have the frequency of cartwheel flights along the time. And even though we can see that there's a um, stability, uh, some of stability on, on this frequency in some dances, in others, there are not. There are some changes in this behavior that will change the entropy, which is represented here on the, on the right. And the entropy would be different between dances. So we expect to test if there's a relationship on this entropy and female preference. But we also found an interesting variability in vocal traits. Uh, and we studied the sound producing during the dance, the buzzy sound. And we took three moments of the dance, the initial, uh, middle, and final parts of the dance, and measured the pulse interval, would it indicate the velocity of sound production. And we compared with, among these movements, and we found that as the display gets to the end, this interval becomes shorter, meaning that the, the sound is faster. So this, is, this supports the hypothesis of the excitatory function of the display. Since we uh, clearly see that males get faster in the end, this is also reflected on their song. 
So with these pieces of information in hand, we uh, were then able to start asking more advanced questions. And I'm going to show a result we did recently integrating these three display components, the coloration, sound, and motor. And we used uh, an approach which has been applied in recent studies in multimodal displays, which are the, the network analysis, where you can fit a network by using the correlations between traits of different modalities, for example, motor components and coloration components, which are represented by different symbols here. And with this analysis, we are able to, to analyze the modularity, meaning that we are able to see how different modalities are correlated between them, if they are separated in modules or not. And we are also able to test and to evaluate the redundancy between the signals and the degeneracy which means that how signals overlap in their information. So we have just published this result in animal behavior when we tested two different contexts of in which the dance is produced. So the courtship dance, which is when female is present, and the practice context, which is when female is not attended the dance, but there are some subordinate, including juveniles dancing and practicing the same movements of the courtship dance. And we measured 21 parameters, including the sound, motor, and color components represented here by these symbols. So in brief, what we found uh, was that the, the, the two networks differ between them and uh, we can see that by the, the network structure and also by using principal component analysis which are presented here by different colors and for each trait and both networks were actually modular we divided signal modalities in different modules but the practice one was much more much more modular, had a higher modularity and degeneracy as reflected by the separation of traits in different modules and the um, high correlations between traits. Well, also when comparing these two networks using the uh, similarity index, we found they are very different. So the index, similarity index is low. And when comparing the display traits using the PC components, the, the com principal components, we found that PC1 is different from these two networks, such that um, males in the courtship network, they have a higher values of bad brightness, blue chroma, flight height, and cartwheel duration. So these results indicate that these two contexts have this, 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 this display traits have different uh, functions in these two different contexts and that in the courtship display signals are more conspicuous. You have uh, higher values of these variables. And this is also true when we exclude one of the, the modality traits, which is the coloration. And by doing that, we increased our sample size significantly. And we found that the practice is much more modular. So the pattern of the difference between these two contexts is much more uh, evident here. And also similarity index is low and there is one difference here in the PC3, where we found that courtship display are faster, have had faster cartwheels and a shorter flight duration. So to conclude, I would like to go back to those uh, two important works that were uh, we were lucky to have them 
because they provided us a detailed background as our starting point to study these species. And so by extending this, these studies, we now have a more thorough structure of these species, of these amazing species, allowing us to go even further on testing and understanding the mechanisms and evolution of this complex courtship display. So all this was possible, of course, due to the hard work students have been doing in the field and in the lab, even past students that helped us analyze the data and current students which are just starting their projects. Our uh, collaborators here were also contributing a lot. My husband and a new postdoc in our lab, Daniela Perez, and also uh, collaborators from specific subjects like physics and bioacoustics and display biomechanics. And of course, I'd like to thank this amazing RCM, which I'm very proud to be part of. And thank you for attending my talk.